Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're going to be faking a liquid simulation with Tyflow. So I want to preface this by saying that there is no way to simulate actual liquid with Tyflow. You need to use Phoenix FD or RealFlow or something like that for an actual liquid simulation. But we are going to use the time measure here and a few forces to create the illusion of a liquid that's sticking to our geometry here. So I have my lady here, and but you can use any model you want. I just needed something for the liquid to interact with, but you can just use a box or whatever. Let's just make a tie flow here as always. So we're gonna need something to emit the particles out of. So you can go under helpers, tie flow and create a tie icon. And maybe you can make it a circle and just move it, you know, above the head of this lady here. So maybe something like this. And maybe we can just birth particles for 200 frames and we need a lot of particles so for now we're gonna do 4000 but we're gonna raise that higher later on next we need to tell typeflow to actually birth these particles out of this icon so we need a position icon operator and pick the icon so now they are here and we need to get them to fall down so let's add a force and the gravity is something we're gonna play with to control how fast um, the liquid basically is falling down. For my example, I did minus 0 0.3 centimeters. Next, we need the particles to collide with the model. So you can just add a collision operator and pick this model here. And just to better see what's happening, let's just add the time measure so we can see the sort of liquid. So standard tie flow, time measure, and just pick your tie flow here. Um, the problem is that we have a bunch of drops and they're not really sticking together the way liquid would. So we basically need to tell Typhlo to bind these particles together so they behave more like a liquid. So for that you can add just a particle bind. So essentially when you think about it, if you're familiar with something like Phoenix FD, in Phoenix you can raise the viscosity of something. Or in other words, how thick liquid is. And when a liquid is thick, it means that it sticks together more. So using the particle bind, we can fake it just by increasing the stiffness or decreasing depending on what you're going for, right? So now the particles are sticking together, um, but I'm just going to set the stiffness to 0.5, which is what I did in my example. I'm going to set it to breakable and set it that 70% of them can break, right? So now we're getting something like this. I think we can just add more particles. So I'm going to set this to... 8,000 and I would like them to interact with the floor so we can go under helpers I mean forces deflectors and just create a standard deflector here and go under collisions and just add the deflector so now they're sort of um, pouring on the ground and I think I'll just move this more above her like this just to get some nicer interaction with the liquid so let's see what that looks like Right, so we're starting to get something that's kind of there. Not too bad for four minutes of work. So let's go into the time measure settings. We need to just give the liquid more resolution. So you can do voxel size, maybe 0.3. And then you can do the blob mesh radius, maybe 1. See what you get. So maybe we need to just increase this a little bit until it sort of smooths out. And for the voxel filtering, maybe we can do Gaussian and play with that a little more. Okay, so that seems to really sort of smooth it out. I like that. So I'm doing 0.5 for the voxel size for now. And remember, just like with a regular liquid simulation, the more resolution you give, the nicer the results, right? So you could just go back to birth and raise the, the amount of particles even higher. So maybe we can do something like 10,000. All right, so with 10,000 particles across 200 frames, with 0.5 voxel size and 1.5 radius, these are the results that I'm getting right now. Now, the only thing that I would still like to do is make the liquid stick to the object more. And we can actually use an operator called the surface force for that. So just drag out a surface force, just pick our model here and sort of watch the magic happen. So now all of the particles are being forced um, to be attracted to the model. So now it looks like you're getting a much more viscous um, sort of a sticky liquid. 
and you can control how much this is happening with just the attraction force. So maybe I can set this to something like 0.3 and let it update. And what you should see is that more of the liquid will sort of break off over time and just continue falling down. Right, so that's exactly what's happening here. The force around the chin is not strong enough to make the liquid stick, so it just sort of falls off. So what you can do actually is just maybe hide um, the model, right? And you could um, get more emitters here and just sort of form or morph the object. I'm thinking, you know, maybe Terminator, liquid metal, stuff like that. And you can just sort of update this in real time so I can just move it um, closer maybe to her face just because I want to see sort of the liquid morph around her and if you want it maybe two different colors like what I did over here what you can do is just um, copy the tie icon so just hold shift and drag and then you can just copy this entire note say copy paste and then for the position icon you're just gonna pick the second one so I'll just say pick this one so now you're effectively going to have twice as much liquid being born, which is actually pretty cool as well. And for the material setup, we just need to go over here and create a multi sub object, say discard alt, set the number to two materials and I already have some materials over here. So for the first one, I'm going to do this just pink shiny V-Ray material. So you can drag that as number one and say instance. That's fine. You can just say copy, paste, and make the second one maybe more purple-ish. And then we just need to go back into TyFlow and add a material ID operator and maybe set the ID of this one to value two and then hold shift and drag this to the other one and set this one to value one. And then you can just select the material and apply it straight to TyFlow but nothing's gonna really happen because the time measure doesn't know what to do. So you can just apply this to the time measure as well, but then you need to go in and check inherit material IDs. And now they're gonna know which color should be which, so you get um, two colors. And then of course, just to sort of finalize this, you can you know, put the camera in place, hit Control C. So I'm just gonna unhide all because I've already prepared some lights. I'm going to put that black shiny material back on our model here. Hit render and this is what we get. Now, important thing, if you want to render out an animation, it's important that you don't forget to go back into TyFlow and add a mesh operator. Otherwise, the time measure can sometimes disappear in the render. I'm not sure if that's a bug or something, but always add a mesh operator if you want to render anything and that should take care of any issues. So this is my final result for the tutorial. And then I just added some curves and some saturation in After Effects to make it pop for the thumbnail. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. You can check out a ton more tutorials on the channel. As always, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. I will be uploading more tutorials. So if you don't want to miss out, hit that subscribe and the notification bell button. Um, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.